This is Molly. I bought her years ago when the US-Canada exchange rate worked to my advantage. She has a Molly-sized wardrobe and shoe rack, as well as a dog sled for the winter, complete with a miniature version of a pain hat made in a community in Nunavut. She has outfits for skating, farming, the beach, and campfires in the fall. Each item she owns has been scaled down proportionally to ensure that they look like miniature versions of the real items. She has a tiny hairbrush, handkerchief, and coin, as well as a Molly-sized book bag for school, complete with a binder, pencil case, and supplies. Her tiny report card indicates that math was not her strongest subject, but she's working hard on her math facts to improve. Each time an item is reduced in size or enlarged, scale comes into play. If you've ever taken a picture on a computer screen and tried to grab the corner of it to make it bigger or smaller, but accidentally grab the side, you can see how that image becomes skewed and is no longer proportional to the original. If this is my original image, this rectangle, and I have a second image here, which I can see is proportional to my original image. My original length was four centimeters. My new length is now 12 centimeters. It's three times as large as my original length. My height of the original rectangle was one centimeter, and my new height of the rectangle is three centimeters. We use a K to represent scale factor, and in this case my K, or my scale factor, has a value of three. All new side lengths are three times the original measures of my first shape. If this triangle is my original figure, and the smaller triangle is my new figure, would you say that those two triangles are proportional to one another? So again, take a look at the dimensions. We have an original base of six centimeters. Our new base is three centimeters. So I can see that I've multiplied this by one half. This is half the length of the original. My original height is eight centimeters. Four centimeters is also half of the original height. So that indicates that every dimension on my original triangle was multiplied by the same factor to get my new dimension. We have a scale factor of one half. Scale factor is the number that we're multiplying all dimensions on an original figure by in order to either enlarge or reduce that figure proportionally. We can write it as either a fraction, a decimal, or a percentage. And scale factor has no units in it. So because the units cancel, you have to make sure that those original and new dimensions are in the same unit. Also notice that if we multiply the original dimensions by a factor greater than one, we're going to end up with an enlargement. If we multiply our original dimensions by a number less than one, but greater than zero, scale factor can't be negative, we're going to end up with a reduction the new dimensions will all be smaller than my original dimensions. So if I take my original dimensions, in this case a circle, I can take my radius, and if I multiply that radius by one, what do you think is going to happen? And you can see that anything times one is gonna be that same original number. So my size isn't getting bigger or smaller. A scale factor of one means the dimensions stay the same. If we were going to derive a formula to calculate K, if my original figure is on the left, my new figure is on the right, what are we doing with these dimensions in order to get K? Well, 12 divided by four would give me K. So we can take the new dimension, divide by the original, and get the scale factor. Now let's check to see if it works on the next one. If I were to take my new dimension and divide it by my original, would that produce our scale factor? And because it does, we can always find the value of K by taking our new dimension and dividing by the original. If we're looking at a diagram or a model, a three-dimensional figure, we can also take that diagram measure and divide it by the actual figure in real life like Molly. And then knowing that a K value greater than one will be an enlargement, a K value less than one but greater than zero will be a reduction, check always to see does your work make sense. If it doesn't, flip those two around and you'll get a value that fits your context. We can now use that scale factor to create a scale diagram, either of a garden, your yard, or to design the layout of furniture in your house. There are 12 inches in one foot. Six times 12 is 72. In scale factor, because it's a value that doesn't have units in it, we would say five inches on a diagram represents 72 inches in actual real life. The inches are gonna divide out, leaving us with the scale factor. So we can see that this is a number less than one. We're going to have a reduction in order to make our plan or our diagram. 
The scale of the plan, you might have seen this on a map sometimes, has a little colon in the middle. And this one can have units. So we would say we have 5 inches on the diagram, represents 72 inches in real life. Because these units are the same, sometimes they won't include them. But you could also say 5 inches on the diagram is 6 feet in real life. Because the units are represented, you don't necessarily have to get them into the same unit. So we can see that with scale, we're going to use a colon to separate the diagram measure from the actual measure or the new measurement from the original measurement. If we're not going to have them in the same unit, we would write the units on them, but if they're the same unit, we don't necessarily have to include the units. If we're told that a model car has a scale of 1 to 18, it means one unit of measure on the diagram, or the model in this case, is equal to 18 of that same unit of measure on the actual car. I would probably take this ratio and write it in the form of a fraction because it's easier to set up a proportion then. We have a model car with a length of this amount. So diagram measure or object measure goes on top, actual measure goes on the bottom. Because no units are included in the scale, my unit centimeters here is gonna be the same unit in our proportion. And now you can cross multiply and get the actual length. Once we get that measurement, it's going to be in centimeters. I would probably divide by 100 to put it into meters. The actual car is going to be about 4.5 meters, 18 times larger than the length of the model car. In order to create a billboard of a car, we're first going to draw a diagram of that vehicle using a scale of 1 to 45. I would again write it as a fraction, so one unit on the diagram is going to be 45 units on the actual, or in this case on the billboard. So we're going to take the length of the car on the diagram, so diagram is on top, we're going to put that on top, and the unit is centimeters. We're looking for the length on the actual, or in this case billboard, again it's going to come out in centimeters when we multiply, and then I would just put it into meters, but it doesn't specify in this question what unit you have to have it in. I want you to pause the video and try the next one, so using our same scale now you're given the height of the billboard is going to be this dimension could you determine the height of the car on the diagram that was used to make it using the same scale because we're now looking for the diagram measure that's on top I'm going to multiply and then divide by 45 and my diagram measure is going to be about 3.61 centimeters in this particular question we're given a diagram of an animal cell and we're asked to find the scale factor that was used to draw this diagram. So we know scale factor is represented by K. It's the diagram measure over the actual measure. Now, scale factor has no units, which means the units have to be the same in order for them to cancel. It doesn't matter which unit you turn it into. You could use centimeters. I just happen to go with millimeters. So I'm going to choose one of them to convert. So my diagram measure is 3.5 centimeters multiply by 10 to get the number of millimeters. If you didn't know that, you're going to go over to the side. You can always set up a proportion knowing that one centimeter contains 10 millimeters, and then you could solve it from there. All right, so now we've got the diagram measure divided by the actual measure. The units will cancel, and K ends up being 140. And then you're going to ask yourself, does this make sense? Is it likely that this cell is 140 times larger than the actual cell? And that is probably the case, so we know this is greater than 1. We have an enlargement. And in our final question, Question, we're asked to determine the scale factor that will transform P to Q. So that indicates we're starting with P, we're going to Q. We're going to choose corresponding measurements, so I would probably use the base. We can see that the base is four units on the original, the base is three units on the new. Or we could also take the height. So I know from here to here we're going to have a height of four units, we're going to have a height of three units. Choose corresponding measures and then see if you can get the scale factor. First do it as a fraction and then you can convert it into the other forms. And then always check to see if this is reasonable. This is less than one, which means we should have a reduction. So from here to here, we are getting smaller. That's good. Three divided by four gives us 0 0.75. Multiply that by 100, and we get the percentage.